Good morning. <laughs> My name is Lauren Morrissey. I am the music director here at Marion High School, and these are some of our choir students from our Select Women's Choir. We're going to be singing a song for you today called Servants of Mary. And it is our song that um, we had commissioned a few years ago for our school, and it was really in honor of you. So you'll hear the words, Servants of Mary, we are called to be saints. And it was, the music was written by John Armstrong and the words by Kariana Kushner. And they did a lot of research about you and about the Servants of Mary, about your mission and your values, and put together this beautiful poem it's set to music really celebrating your mission your values and we sing it a lot here at Marion in honor of the, our servants of Mary and in our students and our mission of our school so we're very happy to share this with you today here is servants of Mary we are called to be saints Let's have another round of applause for Lauren Morrissey and the Marion Girls Choir. I'm Sister Mary Geringer and I get the privilege of welcoming you here today and thanking you for being with us as we celebrate our Quasque Centennial, 125 years of Servants of Mary presence in the United States. And as many of you know, we are also celebrating 100 years of our presence in ministry here in Omaha, especially with Holy Name School, which brought us to Omaha. And we have been with Holy Name School and Parish ever since.
During this past week, we have hosted our first ever congregational assembly. We have servants of Mary from our congregation from the United Kingdom, France, Belgium, Canada, Congo, and Jamaica meeting together. I would like to introduce them to you, not individually, but... <laughs> Uh, the prioress of the UK community is Sister Michelle. Michelle, will you please stand? And will all of the sisters from the UK community please stand? Now I ask Sister Chantal Mary, the prioress of France, Belgium, Canada, and Congo community to stand. Will the sisters from France and Belgium please stand? Now will the sisters from Canada please join them? And our sisters from the Congo, please stand and join your community. Our U.S. Jamaica community, of course, is here today. First, I ask the following sisters to stand or raise their hands. Sister Joy Wiedemann, Sister Mary Hogan, Sister Charlotte Hudeman, Sister Therese Lux, and Sister Ginny Silvestri. The <laughs> These women have all served as provincials for our U.S. community. It's on their shoulders that I stand as I now serve as the community prioress. Will Sister Mary Alice Haley please stand? Or at least wave your hand, Mary Alice. Thank you. <laughs> Sister was formerly the prioress general of our congregation. Now I ask Sister Carrie Larkin and Sister Jackie Ryan to please stand. They join me in serving as the leadership team for our community. Now we invite the sisters from Jamaica to stand. And now all of our sisters from the U.S. Jamaica community, please stand. <clears throat> our congregational prioress, Sister Mary Therese, is unable to join us today. She's in the Philippines, recovering from an accident she had there in May while attending an international Servite Order meeting. She's been with us in spirit all week and sent us a letter. In it, she states, As you celebrate here today, we rejoice in the wonderful witness of our sisters throughout the years as they created communities of service in the spirit of Mary, servant of the Lord, and minister to the people throughout the U.S. in evangelical simplicity, with humility and compassion. We remember the first sisters who arrived in the U.S. and all those who have followed in their footsteps through the years right up until today. With joy and gratitude, they have done this. Congratulations to each of you here today as you continue to give life to our Servite Charism wherever you are called to be. We also welcome you, Archbishop Lucas. Thank you for being with us today. And joining the Archbishop is Deacon Kevin Fuller and his son, Joe. We appreciate you being with us also. <laughs> now, one simple piece of housekeeping. When it comes time for communion, if you would all simply go to the right, leave your row on the right side, and return via the left aisle. Very simple, okay? Thank you, and let us begin.
of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. It's a privilege to be with you this morning to celebrate Mass. Thanks, Sister Mary, for the warm welcome. Uh, great to be here with the servants of Mary, with your many friends. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Thanks to all of the rest of you who are guests uh, for responding to the invitation to come here to be uh, with uh, the sisters uh, to celebrate uh, the wonders of God's providence over these many years and the hope we have of God's continued uh, favor uh, going forward. Uh, warm welcome to the Archdiocese of Omaha, to the servants of Mary who are visiting from, from many places. Bienvenue uh, to our visitors. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you bring a blessing uh, to our local church uh, that uh, enriches the blessing that we already have, the lives, the ministry of the servants of Mary here for 100 years. That we might together enter more worthily into these sacred mysteries. We call to mind our sins. I confess to well, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
O God, who inspire and bring to fulfillment every good intention, direct your servants into the way of eternal salvation. And as they have left all things to devote themselves entirely to you, grant that following Christ and renouncing the things of this world, they may faithfully serve you and their neighbor in a spirit of poverty and in humility of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Colossians. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you do. And over all these, put on love, that is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away, empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. great to be together today and in this liturgy in a particular way to give praise and thanks uh, to Almighty God and thanks in a special way for, for the servants of Mary. So I want to do a personal thanks and then an official thanks uh, as uh, the beginning of, uh, of, of my homily. Uh, I uh, was uh, missioned here to the Archdiocese of Omaha as the Archbishop nine years ago and uh, I didn't know too much about the place and when I got here I found this vibrant community of faith. Uh, the, the manifestation of, of uh, God's grace and the activity of disciples of Jesus Christ uh, so visible, almost palpable uh, in so many places. Maybe some others of you who are visiting uh, uh, sense uh, the, the same thing. So, you know, it sets one to wonder, uh, how did it get this way? Uh, where did this, this richness come from? And, of course, there are, are many things that uh, contributed to that, many people who have invested in it, but uh, n nobody has invested more than the servants of Mary. And so I want to say a personal thanks for being some of the first people to welcome me. Uh, I want to thank you for your prayers and support, uh, for your compassion uh, for me and my weakness and, uh, and struggles. I know so many others in, in the community experience that and have over these hundred years, but uh, very personal thanks uh, from, from, uh, from me to, to all of you. Uh, for, for welcoming me and continuing to support me. It's great to be in this local church uh, with all of you uh, responding together to the invitation of our Lord, each of us in our own way with our own, with our own gifts. But then I do want to say thanks on behalf of the Archdiocese of, uh, of Omaha uh, for uh, your presence and, uh, and your, your good work in, in so many ways. Uh, it, it must be very gratifying uh, for you uh, to know that uh, the the reason that you were invited here, the specific reason uh, to come here in the first place uh, to um, begin and, and uh, support Holy Name School, uh, that that apostolate still continues in, in a very rich way. That uh, parish and school community has changed in, in a number of ways over 100 years, as everything does, uh, as the servants of Mary have, uh, certainly. Uh, but uh, you set it on such a firm foundation and you continue uh, to support that apostolate along with so many others. Uh, Marion High School, not, not uh, a small uh, uh, evidence of, of, your, uh, of the richness of, of your vocations and, and of your dedication. Uh, but uh, I'm particularly grateful to God that that school uh, continues and that so many families continue to, to be served in that spot where, where your presence and, and your work first began uh, here a uh, hundred years ago. <clears throat> You've chosen, uh, not surprisingly, I think, for the, the gospel passage for this Mass uh, today, the, the Magnificat, this beautiful hymn of, of Mary, uh, the, the one to whom you are dedicated, the servants of Mary, and uh, the one who serves always as a, a source of inspiration and, and strength for you in, in your lives and, and, um, and in, in your work. Um, Mary spoke these words, this uh, hymn uh, came forth from the joy of her heart, at what we might call a, a pivotal moment in human history. 
every moment is important, of course, it, in, uh, in God's providence. But at this time, we know that the human family had been separated from God generation after generation because of the effects of, of sin. That was never God's plan. Uh, it was never God's plan that we die in our sins. Uh, and yet that was the result of, of human willfulness. Um, there was no way that we could do anything about that. Uh, it was going to take God's power, God's favor, to heal that division and make the life and the flourishing that is always God's design for us to make, make that possible. And so he chose a woman at this particular moment, uh, in the fullness of time, we might say, to be a special instrument of this healing and salvation. It was God's deep desire then and always uh, for um, his beloved daughters and, uh, and sons. And so Mary was faced with a huge uh, change in her life at this moment. Could she accept this invitation to serve God in, special, in such a special way, in a unique way? And, and what would equip her to do that? What would make her think that could be possible uh, for a, a lowly person like herself? Uh, not only to say yes, but then to really follow through without having a clear sense of what all would, would be involved. So she begins by remembering the favor of God in the past. How God had chosen a people to which she belonged, a holy people, and how God had favored that people in good times and in difficult times over generation after generation. And so Mary could take confidence and hope in that knowledge as she looked back. And then, of course, she looked forward in great hope and thought, well, if God has been so good to us all along, why would we not turn to God now for whatever it is that we need and put our confidence in that same providence that has always been visible if we've been paying attention? Uh, you've, you've chosen as a, a saying for this celebration, it's, it's on, on here, it was on the invitation that we all received, blessed by the past, embracing the future. Uh, Mary didn't say those words exactly, but she said it in different words exactly what we are experiencing and, and celebrating today. How blessed we have been by God's providence in the past and by so many of those who cooperate uh, with the plan of God. And then we know that we're being called into the future always and we embrace the future. We don't see it in all the details. We don't know exactly what will be expected or asked of us. Uh, we don't know the good things we'll experience. We don't know the, the difficult things that, that we'll experience together, but we embrace all of that with confidence and, and with hope at this particular moment in, in the history of, of uh, the, the life and the work of, this, of the servants of Mary uh, here in this archdiocese in this country, and of course in the history of salvation wherever we might be along that, uh, that, that long uh, path until the Lord um, visits us again, leads us safely home. Uh, Mary gives us a, a, a beautiful example of what it means to respond to the invitation that God gives us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. There are many depictions of Mary in sacred art, in sculpture and in, in painting and in tapestry and in, in all kinds, of, uh, in all kinds of, of ways. Well, I've seen several uh, examples of, of this uh, that, that are particularly uh, moving to me, and I think uh, that sort of particularly defined the, the vocation, the, the place of, of Mary at this crucial moment of salvation and maybe the place to which we are uh, invited. Uh, Mary is sometimes uh, shown by herself, sometimes with other people. She's sometimes depicted with Elizabeth, as, as the, the gospel depicts her today, but often holding uh, the, the, the child Jesus. And sometimes we'll see that a, an artist, a sculptor, uh, has uh, depicted Mary holding Jesus in front of her. Uh, her arms extended a little bit, not cradling him, uh, but, but uh, her arms extended. And it, it leaves us with a little bit of a, a wonderment. Is she receiving Jesus or is she giving him to somebody else? And I think really that's the, the wonder that we're supposed to have, that we're supposed to maybe meditate on and, and pray about, because really that was her vocation, and I think it's in that way that she has, and continues to, to do, to, serves as a beautiful model for the servants of Mary, but really for all of us who want to respond uh, to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Mary, we presume, had plans for her life. 
uh, good plans, and they were interrupted by the angel. And at that moment, when she agreed uh, to the, the bigger plan of God, which ultimately includes all of us, she agreed to accept Jesus into her life and to shape her life by that particular personal relationship we would have, that she would have with Jesus from then on. Uh, she became really the first and best disciple of Jesus, we say. Uh, but she didn't think that this was a personal gift only for her. That is, God was favoring her with this special, personal, unique relationship with Jesus that that was kind of the end of the story. Uh, but she was invited to serve as, as an instrument for many other people to come to know the Lord too and to know the compassion of God, which is really personified uh, in the, the coming of, uh, of Jesus Christ. So Mary dedicated herself to receiving Jesus and to orienting her life around the relationship she had uh, with him. It meant some changes, of course, and, and facing uh, a future uh, that was not certain in all, of the, in all of the details, for sure. But it also meant that uh, when she had the opportunity, she was to share Jesus with others. And she had many opportunities. And of course, on the cross, the Lord gave Mary to all of us, and she continues uh, to share her son Jesus with us uh, uh, today through uh, his disciples. Today we celebrate in a particular way through the servants of, of Mary. Those who have taken that example of Mary so seriously that you have oriented your whole lives uh, to, to following uh, the, the same path that, that Mary took. Focused on Jesus giving up everything so that your life might be formed by him, but always then ready to share the compassion uh, the mercy, uh, the, the teaching, the accompaniment, the friendship uh, of Jesus every time you have the opportunity. So that's what we see uh, reflected in you so beautifully in this archdiocese, and I know it's true in all the places where the sisters have served and, and are, are, are serving today. Uh, ready to follow the example of Mary, not just for your own sake, uh, but for the sake of your sisters and brothers, so that we all might understand the compassion of God uh, that has always been throughout the ages, but is offered to us in a particular way now, in a way that, that you incarnate in your own lives, in your own vocations. So thanks be to God, and, and thanks uh, to all of you. Uh, I uh, promise to keep you in my prayers. Uh, sisters, as you celebrate this important uh, jubilee, I know you will continue to pray for me and, and, and for all of us, and we're going to count on that. Uh, we know that your prayers are, uh, are, are powerful, as are your, uh, your many good works. So thank you, and thanks be to God. We recall God's care for us in every age. We have confidence to raise our voices in prayer for our brothers and sisters who are in need and for all of the, the needs that, that come to us in our work and in our prayer. Your response will be, hear our prayer. As the servants of Mary remember 125 years of compassionate living in the United States, we recall all of the people who helped us, financially, emotionally, and physically, as we planted and spread our roots throughout this land. For them, we pray. Hear our prayer. As the servants of Mary remember 125 years of compassionate service in the United States, we recall all the people we taught, touched, healed, counseled, befriended, and led. For them, we pray. As the servants of Mary remember 125 years of compassionate partnering in the United States, we recall all the wonderful people with whom we have worked and the continual challenge to follow Mary's example of strength and wisdom. For this, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As the servants of Mary remember 
125 years of compassionate presence in the United States. We recall all those who depended on our prayers, our liturgies, and our programs to help them enrich their spiritual and inner lives. For them, we pray. As the servants of Mary, remember 125 years of compassionate visioning in the United States. May we always look for the many people, events, and environments in need, believing that our response will still help our broken world. For this, we pray. As the servants of Mary remember 125 years of compassionate love in the United States, we recall all those Servite women who have gone before us in death and blessed us with hope, promise, and continued focus on ministry. For them, we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the signs of your love and providence that surround us here today. Continue to bless us with every gift that we need to respond to the invitation of your son Jesus, to follow him with joy, to share him with zeal, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Almighty Father. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints. And especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the loneliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices be prayed, joined with theirs, in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. <laughs> Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, you are your bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have given for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Communion will be brought to those who cannot come forward. So we will go out and just raise your hand. Thank you.
In our constitutions, it states, we reach out to people of the developing nations by committing ourselves to our missions, supporting them by prayer and personnel, and by material help. We seldom think of the U.S. as missionary territory, but it was in this spirit that the First Sisters were sent from England to the U.S. in 1893. <coughs> They arrived in New York on September 2nd and were in Mount Vernon, Illinois on September 8th. Five days later, they were holding classes at St. Matthew's School. <laughs> 25 years later, a similar occurrence took place when we were called to serve at Holy Name Parish. The sisters arrived on a Friday and on Monday had a school going. The servants of Mary history in the United States, like many communities, followed the course of the growing Catholic school system in the United States. We were asked to staff parish schools in Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, New York, and Michigan. We had our mother house in Novitiate in Enfield, Illinois. Then we moved to Cherokee, Iowa, then to Bedford Street here in Omaha, and finally to our current mother house at 7400 Military Avenue. And that was in 1925. In the mid-50s, Archbishop Bergen asked our sisters to open a girls' high school. We couldn't quite do it in three to five days because we had to build a building. <laughs> <laughs> we did, however, open Marion, financed it, staffed it, cleaned it, and even did door-to-door -door recruiting. Today, we're proud to say that it's a college prep school a Class A school with over 700 students and is our only sponsored ministry, and we're very, very proud of all that Marion has become. Our constitutions go on to state that witnesses to the love that unites us in community, we put ourselves and our diverse gifts at the service of the church's mission to foster love and unity among all people. Over the past 125 years, we have broadened our horizons and stretched our gifts to meet a variety of needs. From our initial focus on education, as witnessed in classroom teaching, school administration, and religious education, we broadened into all types of pastoral ministry in parishes and hospitals, music ministry, food pantries and shelters, human trafficking coalition, diocesan and archdiocesan ministries such as communications, religious education, family life, marriage tribunal, and schools office. We've been in healthcare from research, nursing, and chaplaincy to caring for the elderly, including our own sisters. We've been involved in retreat work and spiritual direction. We have authors and speakers and have worked with those with special needs. We've worked on the Indian Reservation, Head Start programs and literacy programs. We've worked with programs for women transitioning from jail or prisons. We've worked in Goodwill, St. Vincent de Paul, the American Red Cross, and many, many more. We also began an associate program, and we are most grateful to all of our associates who are here with us today to celebrate. We are so very proud to have you as part of our Servant of Mary family. We've begun the St. Peregrine Ministry here in Omaha, our Grief Work Ministry, and now are ministering with our new neighbors at Sheltering Tree. Many of our sisters are actively involved in the various activities through Servi Connections Committee here at Marion. Ever present, of course, is our ministry of prayer. So many people around the country depend on us to pray for them and their various needs. This was most obvious during this anniversary year's 125 days of prayer, as well as the constant requests that we receive for people to be included in the peregrine community, for those who suffering from cancer and other serious illnesses. Especially after this week, 
with our sisters from other countries joining us, we recognize how now perhaps more fully than before that we are a very integral part of a global congregation as well as a global society. We know too that none of what we have done or will continue to do could happen without the support of you, our families and our friends and our co-workers. We are so very grateful for your presence in our lives, for your support of our ministries. It's because of you and countless others with whom we have ministered that we can, in the words of Saint, excuse me, of, of Pope John Paul in his Millennium Address, state that we remember the past with gratitude, live in the presence with enthusiasm, and look forward to the future with great confidence. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for supporting us as we manifest God's compassionate presence in the spirit of Mary. I'd like to take this time again to thank you, Archbishop Lucas, for your kind words, for your offer and your continued support of prayer, and know that you have ours also. I would also like to welcome the representatives from our sisters in the Servite congregation of the Ladysmith community who have joined us today. We're so pleased that you were able to be with us. They're right here in the front row. Mm -hmm. We're grateful, too, to you, Donna Marie, and all of our choir and music ministers who provided such wonderful music for us today. For our behind-the-scenes people, especially Michelle DeLisi and the Marian students and parents who are with us, uh, helping us with the pack, with the sound, the lighting, the videotaping. Thank you for being with us today. Now we invite you to join us for lunch in the commons. Sisters will be out in the hallway to direct you over to Marion. So all I can say now is God bless you. Thank you so much for believing in who we are. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for working with us. Bon appetit. that your servants gathered in your love and partaking of the one bread may be of one heart in prompting each other in the pursuit of charity and good works so that through a holy way of life they may always and everywhere be true witnesses of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
was it called Grand Hotel again? Yeah. Well, 